And as always, while I'm lecturing, go ahead and put questions in the chat. I'll check it um, relatively frequently. And afterwards, we can open it up. At the end of this lecture, I am going to go through an example game. It is not the complete game, and it has, it, it's no, by no means a solution to six, but it should get you going. So I have an example, and it's also um, in the scripts on the YouTube for week six. So now that I've said all that, let me get started. So this week we are dealing with what we call data structures. And data structures is just that. It is a way to structure your data to make it meaningful. Right now we've had lots of data and lots of variables. Well, we can compact that and we can give that, that information meaning. And that's very important because that's how you really start to grow as a programmer when you understand the relationship between all of the, um, the functions and the looping and all of that plus structuring data. So what do I mean by a data structure? Well, a data structure is simply a means of organizing and storing data because we're not always going to have one or two or three word answers. Oftentimes, in my line of work, we are interacting with large information systems like databases and, um, and sometimes multiple databases. So we have to be able inside the program to structure the data in a way that's meaningful. And um, the way we do that is with one of two data structures that Python provides. Python provides a list and a dictionary. And there are some very basic differences. Lists are ordered. They are mutable, which means they can be changed. And they're based on an index. Now, this is exactly like a string, with the exception of the fact that strings can't be changed. Lists can be changed. You can change them any which way to Sunday. Dictionaries are unordered. They are mutable, so they're changeable. And what they do is they map keys and values. So your key will be a name or a number or something like that, and then there'll be a value. Dictionaries do not have an index number. There's different ways to access them to access the data in them. And both of these are important. If for no other reason, then you have to use both of them in the week six assignment, the assignment that's due in week seven, and you have to use both of them in your project. So we got some new symbols. We have the open and close square bracket, which is an indication of a list. That's what they tell Python. If you open a square bracket and you close a square bracket, you've got a list. And an example is just my list. And you've seen the li lists before. We just haven't gone into depth in lists. Dictionaries are completely new. Dictionaries use curly braces. So a left curly brace opens the dictionary, and a white right curly brace closes the dictionary. Now we also have a different look when you're looking at this dictionary. We have after the open curly brace, we have, and I'm sorry, I should have put quotes around those, my bad. I just caught that, and I've used this slide a couple of semesters, so name. Those have to be strings and age. Okay. Let's do that and make it a little more right. So, sorry about that. I don't know why I just caught that. All right. So a dictionary has a name value pair. The name the key sorry, a key value pair. The key is always on the left of the colon and the value is always on the right. And we're going to go into this in just a couple minutes. So lists, we are back to CRUD. Create, read, update, delete. Okay? Create is when you instantiate a new list. Read is when you access the data stored in the list. Update is when you modify, and delete is when you remove the existing list. So we have CRUD. We have our nice little graph here. So how do we create a list? 
we create a list in a couple of different ways. We can create an empty list or a list that is not populated. And that way you just have the open square bracket and the closed square bracket. Um, or you can create a list with things in it, populated. And that just has an open square bracket, some data, whatever you need to put in there. Each element is separated by a comma. Now we've seen this, and in this class, we're going to take it one step further and have lists of lists. So we're going to have nested lists. And that'll be the new list stuff this time. Read, well, we know how to deal with, with indices, with and lists have indices. So you can print my list of zero or and this is when I when I talked about loops and I said four four loops were made for lists, this is why. So I can basically say for elem, and elem is just a variable name, in my list. And what Python will do is it will simply go every sequentially, it'll get every item out of that list and it will do whatever I ask it to do with them. So I'm, I can access my loop, my list data using a loop in, in just a couple of lines. Update, I can modify. Lists are mutable, so I can change a single element. I can just say my list and then give it an index number and then whatever the value is. I can also a, append to the end of the list. So if I'm just growing my list, I'm just going to append things to the bottom and keep going. I can also remove the first element from a list. And there's actually a whole lot more you can do with lists. We don't even begin to, to go into that depth. Down here on the bottom is the Python tutorial for data structures. If you're interested in all of the things you can do with a list, go look at that because we could spend a whole night just talking about list functions. Delete, I use a keyword called del, D-E-L, it stands for delete, and delete just says remove the, this particular element from a list, so just get rid of it. I can also use the del keyword to delete the entire list. Just get rid of it. So the, that's our crud for lists. That's just how we do it. So let's go through a little list basics. And this is 6.1.1, and it basically is modify short names by deleting the first element and changing the last element to Joe. So I have a list, Gertrude, Sam, Anne, and Joseph. That's going to be my user input. I'm going to split that, and it's going to create a list of names, because split does that. And then it says deleting the first element. So that's where we use the del keyword, and we give it names of 0, because 0 is the first element in the list. What that will give me is a shortened list, Sam, Ann, and Joseph. So then it says, OK, we want to change the last element to Joe. And so that's all we do. We just assign names of two, because that's the last element, equal Joe. And it changes. So this is just 6.1.1 is just a very quick challenge that kind of shows you how to manipulate a list. Okay, lots of list methods. Here are the ones that I'm going to talk about tonight, mostly because you have to deal with them when it comes to your labs. Count counts the number of items with a given value in a list. So you don't have to go in. You don't have to do a for loop. You just use the count function on the list. Give it the value, and Python will always give you the right answer. Sort sorts the list in order. We can kind of tell a little more about that. Append, you're adding an element to the end of the list. Reverse does a reverse sort of the elements in a list. So these are notable because you're going to need them in your labs. OK, sort and reverse. So 621 is 
sort short names in reverse alphabetical order. So I'm going to input James, Sam, Sam and Joe and Todd. That's what Professor Lisa just put in. I'm going to split those and I'm going to create a list. So now I want to sort things alphabetically. Well, all I have to do is use, oh, boy, I'm finding errors in these. My bad. My bad, my bad. I'm just going to take this out. Boy, I don't know what happened. My brain was not quite there. Okay, we're just going to put that there. Save it, and I'll go back again. Let's start this over. Okay, so I have a user input. I input my names. I have a list. I have an, a, I create a variable called names, and, and I split the user input into a list based on a space. So I have a list with five elements. So if I want to sort them in alphabetical order, I simply use the sort function. So I give it the name of the list, which is names, dot sort, because I am saying sort everything in names. That's kind of how you can read that. And then it's going to give it to me alphabetical. I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to do a loop, nothing. So now I want to reverse sort. So I'm just going to call names.reverse. And it's going to sort them in the reverse order. So when you're looking at your labs and it's talking about sorting and reverse sorting, those are the only two things you have to do. You just have to use those um, two functions. And that's if everything is the same. If they're all alphabetical, then you can sort them. But if you have a, a list with different types, like you've got um, integers and strings, you'd have to write your own sort function. But for right now, for what we're doing in this class, this sort and reverse works just fine. So loops and lists. Um, Lists were meant to be used with for loops. And so this is challenge 6.3.3, .3, and it says basically you have all the elements in hourly temperature separate elements with a dash and a greater than sign and surround by spaces. So all we're going to do is print this list out formatted. So Professor Lisa types in 90, 92, 94, and 95. I'm going to split because that's the easiest thing in the world to do. So I have a um, list of these temperatures. So now there's my for statement. For index, index is simply the name of a variable that is only available in the local scope of the for loop. In range, and I'm saying len hourly temp. So this time I'm not using in the, the hourly temp, I'm using the length, and that's because I want to also deal with an index. So in is used with, with list. So I'm going to say print hourly temp of index comma end, with it, which is a space. And then I'm going to check if the index is not the last index. And this is why I need to say len hourly temp rather than just the name of the function after the range. Or sorry, that's why I have to use the range rather than the um, rather than just the list. Because I need to check what's going on and where I am positionally in the list. And the best way to do that is to use the index. So here I have if index is not equal len hourly temp minus 1. So if I'm not at the uh, last element in the list, then I'm going to print my right. So sorry about that. So here we go. I, I was at 0, so now I'm going to put 90. So I'm at index 1, which is 92. And then I also can print that. So now I'm at index 2, which is 94. 
and I'm going to print 94. I'm going to put the arrow and then I'm at index 3 which is 95 and I don't go into that if statement because 3, the index is 3 and the length of hourly temp minus 1 is going to be 3 and so I will not go into that if statement so I won't put another arrow. So if you happen to be doing a lab where it's asking you something similar, this is structure you need to use. Um, just a reminder, the in operator will always evaluate elements in order. Okay, multidimensional lists. Multidimensional lists can actually, um, excuse me, multidimensional lists can actually confuse students who are new to data structures. And I think that's because we don't talk about it as a matrix. We talk about it, or we don't talk about it like as something that people are used to seeing. People are used to seeing spreadsheets. A multidimensional list is, in fact, just like a spreadsheet. You have rows and you have columns. Um, and so the way we do this in Python is that you have a list that contains another list. And the outer list is the each individual inner list is a row. And then you have the cell that shows you what you populate with that row. So I have three rows in my spreadsheet. Row number one has 10, 20, and 30. So the syntax is a little different here. We're going to have an outer open square bracket and a, an outer closed square bracket because in all, afterwards it's a list. It is simply a list. It just contains lists. So you have to start and end with the square brackets. And then each individual list inside has to have its own square bracket. So in this case, the first row, which is 10, 20, and 30, it's going to have square brackets in its representation in Python. We're going to have a comma, and then we're going to do the next one. So 40, 50, 60, and then 70, 80, 90. And you'll notice there's no comma after 70, 80, and 90 because it's the last element in the outer list. So I have an outer list. And in that outer list, I have three inner lists. And each of those inner lists contains values. So let's talk about nested loops. Because you ha if you're going to have multidimensional lists, you have to access them using uh, nested loops. And it's going to be nested for loops. So I'm going to input something, and it's one, two, three. 246369 separated by commas. So I'm going to split that and what I get is I get a list of um, three strings. The first string is 123, the second string is 246, and the third string is 369. And I'm sorry this is just running on its own. So how do I make this into a multi-dimensional list. Well, the way I do that is I create a list that's going to hold everything. So my list that's going to hold everything is table and I create it as an empty list, just an open square bracket and a closed square bracket. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for row counter in range len rows. Okay? So rows is what is, is the second line of this script. And it is what was used, um, what, excuse me, what came out of the split. So I'm going to say, that, so I have, um, sorry. So I have an outer for loop that is going to go over each of the individual strings and it's going to do something. What it's going to do? It's going to split them. 
So I want to create a um, a list with just the values. And I put that into a variable called cells. So I have a row and I have cells. And now what I want to do is I want to change all of these to integers. So I'm going to say I'm going to have another um, variable. And this is just an empty list. I'm going to call it row. And then I'm going to say for cell counter in range of cells, because I'm just working on one, two, three. And I'm then going to go and I'm going to append the, uh, I'm sorry, this is running on <laughs> toe. I have to go back and change that. So it's appending to the inner list, which is called cell, sorry, it's called row. The, whatever is in the cell, I'm changing it to an integer. And then I'm going to append the whole thing to table. So in the end, when I output table, yeah, these aren't in the right order. I'm going to say for index cell comma in enumerate row, which is something very nice and easy. So what I've done here is I've done two variables, not just one. So I have four index comma cell. Index and cell are just variable names, and they will be available only within the um, local scope of the inner for loop. And then I'm going to use a function called enumerate, which will actually give me the index and the value. So it'll say index of 0, value is 1. Index of 1, value is 2. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to print whatever that value is and a pipe and a space, or not the new line. And that only happens if the index is not the same as, as it's not, sorry, if it is not the last value. If it is the last value in the inner um, index, then it simply won't print the pipe and the end. It will just move on to the next um, row, to the next set of values. And otherwise, I just print the cell because that's going to give me the new line I want. Sorry I didn't do a great job of explaining that. Brain is a little not right tonight. Okay. So dictionaries. Dictionaries are what they call an associative container. That means it, it associates a value with a key. And this is very, very handy. If you've ever heard of no SQL databases like MongoDB, they actually use dictionaries. That's what it is. It's just a lot of dictionaries. A key, it can be anything, and so can a value. Uh, a key usually is a name of some sort, usually is a string when I do it. Now, it could be different when you do it. But the values can be anything. The values can be lists. The values can be other dictionaries. And this becomes important because you're going to have to use a dictionary of dictionaries in your game. Dictionaries are an unordered collection. They're unordered because they don't have an index. So even if we even if we as humans perceive an order to them, because you know, you've got the first entry and the second entry and the third entry, there is no guarantee of order uh, from Python. So um, actually, let's go back and we're actually going to, did anybody ask any questions? No. Okay. I'm going to stop and we're going to go, and this is what we're going to cover at the end. Um, so what do I want to cover? Nested list. Okay. This is similar to what I just talked about, except I need to make it so that people can read it. So instead of having the input, I don't have that. So what I've done here, and it's just a really simple program. Let's see if I can make it just a little bigger. There we go. 
And it is just to show you how things work in a nested list because this is one of the things that I think students can have problems with. So let me just run through this. Okay. iCloud. Six. Where is it? Nested list. Okay. So I'm just going to debug it. And we'll go to variables. There's no variables right now. I'm going to step over and now I have a list. I have a list of lists. So my, it says when you look at lists down here, and this is the other thing I wanted to show you because Python makes it very handy. I have something called nested and nested it says has three values in it. And that's because it only, nested only has three values. It has three lists. However, if I drop this down, you will see that for nested, the zero index has a list with three elements. The index of one has a list with three elements. Index of two has a list with three elements. So if you're ever concerned about understanding your nested lists and you're in PyCharm, it's a very handy thing to go over and look at the variables because PyCharm will spell it out for you really, really well. And you can, in fact, drop down at 0, 1, and 2, and you'll see that each of the list elements has their own value. So, so if I step over, let's go to the console, I say row in range 0, len nested. So len nested is going to be 3. And I'm going to start at 0, and I'm on row. So row, if you look at this, it'll be rows and columns. And that's kind of like, I, like the way I like to talk about it, because it's like a matrix. And then I immediately go into looking at what's in the inner, li sorry, the inner list. And how I do that is I just, say nested of row. That's all I do right there. So I've got another variable column. I'm in range 0 of len nested row. And that is, in fact, I, I can, oh, sorry. In PyCharm, I can, come on. I just had it. In PyCharm, I can usually just, uh, mouse over and it will show you what that is. But that's basically what it is. It's, it's right now we're one, two, three. So I'm going to go and I'm going to print nested. Okay, zero of zero is one. Now this is another thing that it's good to understand. When you're dealing with nested loops and when you're doing with lists, sorry, when you're dealing with lists of lists, and you want to access an actual value, you're going to have to give it two indexes. And in this case, you do that by just giving it the index number. You have a left, um, sorry, boy, I'm having trouble tonight. I'm sorry, I'm struggling, people. All right, so for nested, you're going to have the index of the, um, you're going to have the index of the outer list and then the index of the inner list. So the outer list, this is at index 0. In the inner list, that is at index 0. So when I say nested of 0, of 0 is 1, that's what I did. So now, we're going to print that. And so now if we go back and look at that, that is still 0 for nested. And then at index 1 is the value 2. So we're going to have nested of 0 of 1 is 2. Let's do it again. This one is going to be 3. 0 of 2 is 3. So now when I go to, I'm now coming out into 
the um, outer loop and my row is now going to be one so this is nested of one it's that whole list so if I want to get the first element in the list in that in in the four five six list then I have nested of zero of one of zero because that is zero so this is one and that's zero so I do the same thing one of one is going to be five one of two is going to be six so I come back out now I'm at row two that's this right here so row two I'm going to have nested of two of zero is seven because this is two and this is zero and I'm going to do the same thing two of one and two of two and then I'm done hope that wasn't too confusing let's go back to keynote so that's what I wanted to talk about about nested loops have I confused everyone I hope not okay dictionaries associative containers so how does Python know it's a dictionary because it has curly brackets curly brace curly braces a left open curly brace and a right closed curly brace and what it also has is keys and values so if I have a variable called my dict and I say equal I'm going to have key value pairs and the keys is um, sorry keys and values name is a key and the value is Lisa age is a key and the value is 42 amount is a key and the value is 3.14 so you can have anything in the keys and you can have pretty much anything or pretty much anything in the keys and anything in the values including another dictionary so dictionaries also have crud just like lists do so we can create a dictionary an empty dictionary is an open and closed parenthesis sorry open and closed curly brackets or I can create a populated dictionary I can read from a dictionary now here is a difference with lists you don't have an index value to get at the data what do you have you have a key so the key in this in this case is name and the value it would print would be Lisa okay update I can change the value of an of an associated key by simply saying my dict which is the variable name which is the key and then I'm going to assign it to the value that it's going to be replaced in this case the name is no longer Lisa the name will be Fred and I can also append to the end of a dictionary by giving it the key and then assigning the value I can delete I can delete the whole dictionary so challenge 6.1 6.1 it says write a loop that prints each country's population in country pop so country pop is a you know it's got the country initial and then the population that's what it has this looks like it's made for dictionary so how do I turn this C colon 136 comma 1 colon 124 blah 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 into a dictionary well I do it in a couple of ways the first thing I do is I'm going to use split and I'm going to split based on comma which gives me a string for each of the C colon the country colon population so that's what I'm going to do then I'm going to figure out how to get the country population into a dictionary so I'm going to say four pair in entries now entries is just my value for my list that's all it is and I'm going to say split 
underscore pair equals pair dot split. Pair is a variable that was created in the for loop. It's only usable in the local scope of the for loop. So I have some, a variable called pair. So in this case, the first pair is going to be C colon 136, and I'm going to split it based on the colon, which gives me a list of C and 136. So now I can say I can add my key value pair, split underscore pair of zero is going to be C, and split underscore pair of one is going to be 136. So what I have here is C 136. And then I'm going to go back up to the top of the loop, and I'm going to do this again. So I colon 124 becomes a list. I'm then going to append it. I go up to the top of the loop again. I'm going to do it for US 318. So I now have that as my dictionary. And I'm going to do it for O252. And so I have now added all of that to my dictionary with a for loop and a couple of split statements. So that's how you do that when you're trying to go from user input into dictionary. It is probably always going to be a good idea to split it into a list and then potentially split it into another list. So now I want to print it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a function called items on the dictionary. So what I have here is I have four country comma pop in country underscore pop dot items. Country and pop are just variables. They are created in the for loop and you can only access them in the local scope of the for loop. Items gives me back the key and the value. So I don't have to do anything special. By doing country pop dot items, country will have the key and pop will have the value. So that's what items does. And now I'm going to print country, comma, has, comma, pop, comma, people, period. And I didn't put spaces in there, and I should have. So My apologies. Let's go to the next one. Nope. Okay. So that's basically what it was. Um, so now, um, dictionary values can be anything, including another dictionary. And um, we're going to go through an example when I'm done going through the labs where we will talk about and we'll walk through what this could look like in your particular game and in the dragon game that you're going to have to write this week. So for lab 6.12, um, varied amount of input data pseudocode. So that's just what it is. So basically we're going to get some input, and we're going to split that into some uh, a list called tokens. Now we have to convert our string to integers, so that is going to be a for loop. And we're going to append the data to um, append token to input data, because input data is a new empty list that I set up here. So basically I'm going to take a string, I'm going to convert it to an integer, and I'm going to append it to the bottom of the list. Now I want to get the average and the max. So this is not something that you have to worry about um, in terms of doing the math, because Python will do it for you. So you're going to get the average, you're going to sum of input divided by length of input. So um, built-in functions that iterate over lists. So that's what you want to look at. 
And then you're going to get the max of the input data. And then you're just going to output it. So this 6.12 is all about lists. And you're going to have to create a list from user input. And then you're going to have to do some stuff with the value in the list. I don't know why that's there. Oh, that's because I just did it. My God, my brain tonight. I really do apologize. Okay, filter and sort a list. So we're going to get user input. We're going to split it. We're going to create an empty list. We're going to add the tokens in. We're going to sort it. And we're going to then um, output the values. So this is very similar to 6.12, except here we're sorting it. And this is where that sort function comes in. The list.sort will do all that for you. You don't have to write another loop. You do have to write a loop to output the values. OK, word frequencies. So what we're basically looking for here is we're looking for the frequency of some input value in a list. So we're going to have an input, we're going to input a value, and we're going to input a sentence. And then for input in user sentence, we're going to output user sentence of index and the count. So every time we come to a word, we're simply going to count. This is where that count function comes in. And it's only this, this lab is only a couple lines of code. Okay, You get the input, you split the input, and then you do a for loop over that list that you created with the split. And then for every word in that sentence, you're simply going to count to see if it's there twice or three times or four times. That's where the count function comes in. All right, replacement words. So here what you're going to do is you're going to replace some words. So I'm going to have word pairs, which is going to be an empty dictionary, because this is a dictionary um, lab. And then I'm going to input some words, and I'm going to split it. Again, start with a list, so you're going to split it. Um, so now we're going to put the words into a dictionary. So you're going to say for index in range, in range from 0 to length, increment by 2. Because what the problem says is you're going to input basically the key and the value, and the key and the value, and the key and the value. So you don't want to go every element in the list. You want to split them by two. So the first index of zero is a key. Index of one is a value. Index of two is a key. Index of three is a value. And then we're going to get the user sentence from input, and we're going to do some word replacement in the dictionary. So here's where you want to use that dot items, where I showed you that in uh, one of the examples. And it's basically going to have two variables, and you're going to get the key and the value, and then you're going to replace them. So that those are the uh, labs for this week. And again, I'm really sorry my brain is not functioning well tonight. Um, so does anybody have any questions before I go into the game? Okay. No. Okay. So what I really wanted to show you, and please ask questions. I know I've been somewhat confusing tonight, and again, I apologize. So please ask questions. Um, so, is this the one I want? That's not the one I want. Okay. Directions. This is the one I want. So, this is just a little program I wrote up called Directions. And you can go up or down, right or left. That's all you can do. And I have three rooms. So, I have room one, room two, and room three. And if I go up, from room one, I end up in room two. And if I'm in room two and I go down, I end up in room one. Or if I go right, I end up in room three. If I'm in room three and I go left, I end up in room two. 
So what we see here, let me make this bigger, is this rooms is a dictionary of dictionaries. I have my key is room one here. So this is the room. And where can I go from that room? This is what this dictionary is answering. That's a question this dictionary is answering. If I'm in room one, what can I do? Well, if I'm in room one, I can go up. And where will that lead me to? That will lead me to room two. So that's how you can read this dictionary. And this is very similar to what you're going to have to do for the Dragon Game. And it is somewhat similar to what you're going to have to do for your game. And I have a, a list for my directions. I can go up, down, I can go right, or I can go left. And I just want that list there because it's a quick check. I can say, is the direction the user input in the directions? And if it is, then I can do something. If not, I can say it's invalid. So next, I've created a couple of functions. The first is my instructions. I'm going to print out my instructions. I take as an argument the room because I need to tell the user what room they're in. Um, so I'm going to print, basically, you're currently in room and then I give it the room name, you can move between rooms using the following directions. It would be good if I could spell. So how do I get the following directions associated with room one? Well, I say from direct, in direction. I'm sorry, it's not per room. It is the general directions. So I'm just going to basically go through up, down, right, and left and print them out. And then I tell it to stop, enter Q. So now, how do I move between my rooms? Well, I've got a function called inRoom, and it says what I can do when I'm in the room. That's why I named it inRoom. But you could name yours move rooms or move. I pass in the current room and the direction. So I have two pieces of information, and with those two pieces of information and this dictionary, I can do something. I can either move or tell them I can't move because it's an invalid direction. So how do I do that? So first of all is I get the dictionary associated with room. So I have a dictionary called rooms. And if I say where to is rooms of room, then I should get a value back. If, I, if it's room one, I should get this dictionary back. If it's room two, I should get this dictionary back. And if it's room three, I should get this dictionary back. Once I have that dictionary, I can decide where to go. So I have this direct, and it's up, down, right, left. That's what the user put in. But maybe the user put in 22. Or maybe there's no... Uh, down, right, or left, like in room one, there's only an up. So I have to check it. So I have to say if direct not in where to, print invalid input for room. I can't go down. I can go up. So then I return the current room that I'm in because I can't go anyplace, so I'm still in the same room. And then I'm going to change room, or I'm going to change rooms to wherever I want to go. And so I have where to and direct. So that's what I'm going to tell them, and then that's what I'm going to return. My new room will be where I currently am plus the direction. So if I'm in room one and I plus it with the direction, I get to room two. And then here's my main game, game play loop. First, I have a variable with a sentinel value. Could be x. Doesn't matter. It's just to make sure that I can drop into my while loop. I also have to tell it where to start. The game doesn't just know where to start. So if you're playing your game and you're going to have every, and the game is going to start in the parlor, your current room needs to be parlor. Um, and it doesn't have to be the dictionary, it just has to be the name. 
And then I'm going to have my gameplay loop, which is a while loop. It has to be a while loop. And basically, I'm just going to keep going until somebody types the letter Q. So I'm going to get my instructions. This has to be inside the loop. I'm going to print out my instructions with the current room, and I'm going to expect input. Somebody's got to type something. If it's Q, then I break out a list, and I'm done. Sorry, the loop, and I'm done. Otherwise, I need to check to make sure that somebody didn't enter 22. So if somebody entered 22, that's not going to be in directions up here, which means it's an invalid move right off the bat. So I'm going to say that, sorry, that's not a valid input, and I'm going to go back up to my while loop. So I'm going to do a continue here. So I have a break if it's Q. If it's an error, because somebody put in 22 instead of up, down, right, or left, I'm going to continue back to the top of the loop. So now I have an if statement based on the current room. So current room is room of one. I'm going to say the new current room is in room, and I'm going to send room one and the user input. Else if current room is room two, I'm going to do room two in the user input or room three in the user input. Now, this could be simplified, but I'm going to leave it this way for now. Let you guys think about how to simplify it. So this is a basic template for what you want to do for the Dragon game this week and for your final game the following week. Now, do you guys want me to take the time? Because we have five minutes. Do you guys want me to take the time to step through this in the debugger? Show of hands, yes or no. Going once. Going twice. Okay. So I won't be going through that tonight. It will be up on the... the um, the YouTube channel tomorrow. If you're in my class and you have any questions, let me know. And again, I apologize for being a scatterbrain tonight. So everybody have a good evening. Thank you. No problem.